Good evening. Sorry for the delay. We had a little technical. There's something going on here, but we're working it out. But thank you so much for tuning in. And welcome to the shop, as usual. Here it is, Shop Night Live. Uh, this is, I'm Tom McLaughlin. This is Epic Woodworking, where together in the shop, we get to the heart of woodworking. And tonight, I've got a special treat for you, a project I'm working on. So we're going to work on some techniques to develop an awesome clock face on, I'm going to use this as my example, but I'm also going to play around with some other styles that we can push a little further, which will be continued into next, next session too, next Thursday night. So. I think this will make some great Christmas gifts. It's pretty inexpensive hardware. It's pretty inexpensive tooling to get this going. Um, you don't need a fancy sunburst top like this to make it. You just need a piece of wood and some determination. <laughs> hey, if you like this content, would you go ahead and subscribe and also like and share and ring the bell and all that fun stuff. And thank you as a follow-up to all of you who purchased some of the clear out sale that we had last Saturday. We're going to do it again. We're going to get some other groupings together. And those things that don't go fast, we're going to slash prices <laughs> eventually. Well, you know, within reason. What's the matter? Because <laughs> I, I have to move on. I have to pass these things on so you can enjoy finishing making them. I, believe me, I wish I had two lives right now. I love doing that, but I can't. I just have to move into this next thing, which is opening the shop and sharing with you and coming up with new designs, which is really my passion. So that's what I'll be, I'll be doing. So uh, during the, the next few weeks, I have a special project I'm involved in that I'll let you know about at some point. But it's going to really have me uh, tied up and busy. So I'm, go I'm still going to do our shop night lives. But who knows, one night we might just have a Q and A where we get your questions in early, and uh, we just have some fun with that. All right, so let's get started on our clock. Now, this one usually, like I said, when you show up, I try to be, I try to play it cool, and uh, you know, have everything ready and figured out so that I can look like I know what I'm doing. That's the way I like you to think of me. <laughs> Excuse always, me. Always. What? I said always. Oh, always, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so who doesn't, who doesn't like to be thought they know what they're doing? And so the old saying, fake it till you make it, is sometimes in play, but never here. I'm always up front with you. When I am figuring something out, I'm going to tell you. And that's what we're doing. And I thought it'd be fun because as I'm working this through, you're going to see some of the choices. And you know, this is a good opportunity for you to chime in and show everybody that you, knew, you know what you're doing. <laughs> Do you know what you're doing? You ever hear that question? <laughs> Who wants to hear that? Do you know what you're doing? Do you know? Yes, you do. I'm looking at a great man. That's yeah. what <laughs> 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 All right. Well, we all do our best. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing my best. And I hope you are too. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is figure out a way to make some markers for the different hours. That's the main agenda for tonight. And how to put them in efficiently and accurately. So let me just show you a cool little kit. Um, this, 
I have to tell you, I am really disappointed at the state of quartz mechanisms available on the market. I mean, maybe this is state of the art, the best they got, but it is the hardest thing in the world to find one that looks like it's high quality. This is a quartz movement. You know when you see quartz movement? I don't know why, but I always thought of that like beautiful Timex I would get at Christmas or something and just imagine the intricacies and fine jewels and gearing inside that clock face. Quartz movement, it used to say. Well, this is a quartz movement too. Can you see this? The camera lady is double dutying again. She's typing, reading. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to myself. Okay, show me. Sorry. This is a quartz movement, and it's a... Uh, it doesn't look like the cheapest little plastic thing, but this is actually for, it's called a high torque quartz movement. Now, when, if you're looking for movements, you can, you can look up clock movements, uh, quartz clock parts or movements on Amazon or something, and this is the kind of thing that'll show up. And some will say high torque, and all that means is they have more torque to drive longer hands. Now, if you don't have the high torque, you probably have, you, you'll be getting smaller clock hands. So you don't need a massive clock face for this. I got these larger hands because I wanted to, it to fit this, this uh, clock face. So it's pretty much maxing out there. I mean, it's, it's about as far as you want it, right? So I almost think of snipping some of this one off, but this actually, I'll talk to you more about how I got this the way it is, because it didn't come silver. But regardless, this is like considered a longer hand. You also can buy these quartz movements that swing hands that are really long, that you can make this, this crazy like wall art piece. That goes, and you just put the numbers on the wall. You know, it's this funky, I think it's a kind of a new trend. Is it a new trend? Does everybody have one of these things? You got a big clock on your wall? I mean, everybody's gone digital, but maybe this is kind of like a, a sentimental journey to see a round analog type clock on the wall. <clears throat> but anyway, we're going to uh, work with this and... Um, what we need to do is just figure out a way to, um, what I want to do is inlay some round, some circular dots around the clock face. Should be easy, right? It's going to be easy because we're going to make it easy and we're going to use um, plug cutters to do the first version, all right? So I just want to show you, you're going to have to come in here now. Okay. Good. I feel like Ooh. you've been far away from me the whole time. <laughs> Were you zoomed in? Yep, I was. Oh. <laughs> at, the, at the appropriate time. You're like way over there. All right, so it's good to have you over here by the bench. Which angle would you like? That's sure. perfect. You're, you, okay. you're perfect right there. All right, so what I got, well, not over there. Okay. You, you, <laughs> you were perfect right there. Okay. No, you, okay. Right. Perfect. <laughs> I'm he can't even you. see what I'm, I'm looking at. I'm just messing with you. All nice. right. So I just got this <coughs> um, piece of plywood. And we're just going to lay out a quadrant. I already kind of started messing around. But I've got my um, calipers or my dividers, I mean. And this just has a sharp point at each end. It's nice to have these. Um, occasionally, you want to not measure but just use dividers like this to step off distances. Let me see. This end might be better. Gosh, so Some of that what? piece of equipment is bringing back bad math vibes for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, the teacher said, now bring a compass. We're going to do some geometry. All right, so here we are. I'm, I'm just going to swing an arc that's... Uh, that's technical jargon. Swing an arc right there. There you go. And I've got my axis right here. So 
So I'm going to grab the um, my square. Let's see that. Can't see that arc very well, huh? It'll show up in a second. Okay. Don't you worry. All right. So <laughs> some is it? Are you saying that, or is somebody saying that? It's me. Oh. Okay. Who knows? Maybe they can see it perfectly, but probably not. If you can't. All right. So I'm just going to set that corner right here my little drafting square, right in the center of my, my pivot point, and that looks good. Sometimes I don't know why I get too fussy, because I just am. And then I'm going to make a mark here. Okay, so this is going to show me the quarter hours. I could make a line like this and carry it right across my face, and same here and get a perfect 90 degree corner. But in this case, this is going to be one of my quarters. So let's say this is, excuse me, this is 12 o'clock. This is 9 o'clock. I didn't have a banana before tonight. I had an apple. <laughs> so it's a little more liquid, I guess. Um, I'll try to keep it contained. Uh, here we go. So I'm going to step this off. Now this is where dividers are going to divide this area into equal parts. So if this was 9, I'm going to need 10 and 11. So I've got to break this into thirds. I'm just going to guess right at first. I'll say right there. Swing around. Hit. Swing around. Oh, my word. And I'm too far. Too far. So I thought you were going to hit it. <laughs> I didn't hit it, so now what? Capacity. Are you disappointed? That's crazy. You jumped the gun. I did. You really do think I'm good. <laughs> All right, there we go. Right there. Swing around. Boom. And then, oh my gosh. Boom. Right there. Wow. I didn't expect to hit it in two. So I'm going to start here, and let's just make a little dimple. And we'll make another little dimple and just check. And boom, that spot on. So we're very happy with this now. Let's get the all. It's all we need. We're just going to go boom, boom. And let's mark the other. Now, if I was really doing this on a clock face, obviously I wouldn't want to scratch a circle in there. I would do it probably with a pencil. Um, sweep, but I would use my dividers to step it off. The dividers with a good point, they give you a greater accuracy than if one end is a pencil. Um, so anyway, that's my mark, that's my mark, and then I have that. All right, so let's go over to the drill press, and we're going to drill some, some uh, shallow holes here, and then we'll make some plugs to fit them. So come on over. Uh, where did I put my... Go ahead, I'll be right there. Okay. I'm forgetting something. Okay, here it is. Okay. All right, so for this little trial face, I'm going to use a half-inch Forstner bit. I said that right. It's F-O-R-S. T N E R. Forstner. Forstner. Very good. I, I'm very tempted to say Forstner. Is that hard to say? Forstner. <laughs> Typically hard to say. No, Forstner. That would be like a little Forstner bit. So, I'm, this, so my between the hour indications, those are going to be half inch. And then I'll make one inch for the bigger ones. Now, I think if I was using that large of a, an indicator, I would have a bigger face than this, but I just want to go with this for fun. All right, so I think I've got the depth already set where I want it on this one, but let's give it a check. Here we go.
All right. Wow, that's so quiet. I can barely hear a thing. <laughs> no, the guys from from Powermatic have not called me yet. They got to step up their game. I'm going to need, or they might be embarrassed in the near future. So, if anybody knows Powermatic, <laughs> we can call them. Or Peter, I'm not, you're, you're way too generous, but if you want to do something sometime, I'll be around. All right, so I've got my index right there, boom, right in the point. Now I want to set the depth. So the stock that I'm going to inlay here is right here. I'm going to put some wenge um, as a test piece. It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. I'm just going to, um, let's see if we can do it this way. These stops are not impressive to me. Oh, wow. I think that's almost perfect. So I'm setting a little gap in the stop that's a little smaller than this. Let's see what happens. pretty good. All right. I just had a little blowout on my cheap plywood, but not to worry. This is just a test piece. But you can see we've got our 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, so let's uh, shift this up now. So now we want to make the plugs. We've got that material, but now this is our main plug material. So what you need to make, what you need to cut a plug is a plug cutter. Okay. <laughs> Everybody, there you go. Uh, we do not have these on the links because I didn't, I couldn't decide what to say. Uh, but you can go on Amazon and look up wood plug cutter, and make your choice. I'm, I it's hard for me to recommend one or another. I'm not sure which ones. You can pay. This one's is made by Fuller, and it does a nice job. But I'm not. I haven't studied. The differences of plug cutters to tell you. But what this does is it cuts, uh, this, one, this is a one inch plug cutter. This one, this is a, can you see all right here? This is a half inch plug cutter. I'll put this up. Half inch. And then this is a three eighths. And I also have a quarter somewhere, but I'm just showing you these. So I'm going to need the half and the one inch. And now, when you use a plug cutter, it cuts narrower on top. So when you make the plug, you're going to have one side of this material is going to be slightly narrower than the other in circumference, which you want because it makes it easier to get it into the, the hole you just drilled. And then to tap, when you tap it in, because it's flared slightly, it gets really tight. So I like to mark the side that is narrower, which is always the upside. There's always an upside. And then the half inch, whoops, that's the three eighths. I'll do the same with the half inch. So let's just get a plug cut here. And for this, I'm going to have to get rid of my stop. And all I want to do here is go, just go easy. I'm not going to get too close to the edge. It might want to break this out. So, because I've got kind of a small piece, I'm just going to go slow and let's see what happens. Okay, now the plug, because I've got thin material here, it actually is going to break off and get kind of gently stuck there. I'm not really doing this hard, but... 
taken it out. So now I have the chalk is telling me that's the narrower side. So I'm going to set that aside. Let's just put a little more. And let's switch out. I'd have to do several of these, but let's just go with the half. See what we get. These plug cutters, they come in handy. I mean, there's a lot of times you want to cover a, a recessed screw or something like that. And it's nice to have them because you can, you don't need dowel stock or anything like that. You can make your own plugs out of any material, any contrasting material. So I'm imagining we have a lighter clock face here. So we want some contrast. We're using this darker wenge for this one. So that one I saw the, um, I could see the MDF coming up. I need a small screwdriver here. Now, usually you can do, you can cut these plugs out of thicker stock and then bandsaw the stock. I'll show you that some other time. But where the plugs just stay together, they fall out or you can put a piece of tape so they don't and it's easy to get them. But here we go. We just want a few out of this thinner stock, so that's what we got. Now, I got a few more back at the bench, but let's go. I think I'm done. What here. material is that, Tom? Steve is asking. To the bench. This is Wenge. Wenge, okay. Wenge, yeah. Um, it's a dark, um, it's almost like ebony, but it's got more brown streaking in it. It's uh, exotic hardwood from Africa. So, let's see. Let's head on back. All right, so now if this was real, and it's almost real, um, I would have more. So I've got a, a couple more over here with the chalk. And I'm going to put a little glue in there, pretending it's real. And let's take a little circle. I don't need a ton. It's going to be tight on the edge, and it's going to bottom out, so it's going to be glued in there nicely. Don't overdo it, because you'll have a lot on to square it out. All right, so I'm just going to put the narrower part, the chalk, down. And you could care about grain orientation, but I guess I'll just go with the line here. I feel like these are planets orbiting somehow with the, whoops, my chalk. So let's get that one with the line. And let's get the little, my little uh, toy maker hammer. Okay. <laughs> Too loud? <laughs> Sorry. And I'll do another one. What do you think, Corn? Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm not making cake. All right, and then here's another one. No offense to cake makers out there. I like cake. All right, last one. Chalk down. I wish I had, when I drilled these out, I wish I went deeper with them. I didn't go quite deep enough. But I'll show you anyway. Let's get one level. Now, you could really make sure they're in all the way by, uh, you know, skillfully putting the clamp on like this. <laughs> we didn't notice. What? <laughs> what the heck's wrong with this clamp? Oh, there's a, it's there's, the clamp's fault. there's a wad of glue right there. Some joke I didn't clean the glue off. If there were more people in the shop, I could blame other people, but I can't. All right, somehow I got a drop of glue right there. Yes, Eric, you could squeeze them in with a clamp. I think that's what he's trying to do, Eric. <laughs> what are you trying to do? There we go. 
I'm going to do it. <laughs> yes, Eric, see? You can just go like that. I could put a block of wood there, but they actually appear that they were bottomed out. And because they fit so tightly, there's no interest in these springing back. You know, they don't want to come out. So you don't have to keep a clamp on them or anything like that. That's good. That's All right. Cool. Good, good strategy there. So, thank you. So I'm going to just bring those down to plane, to level. And by to bring them to plane, I'm going to use a plane. And this one I usually have set heavier. Let's get it, let's get it in the vise. I guess I'll use my hold fast. Put that right there. And let me get that. Sorry, that was another big noise. It's okay. All right, so see if you do better, like I would have taken more time setting that depth. I left them a little high. So I just have to hand plane them 45 times, <laughs> maybe more. Now you could do this a lot of ways. If you do try to chisel them off, that's fine. But sometimes when you do that, the grain will run downward and they tear below the surface, which is kind of a bummer because um, then you got a bad looking plug. All right. All right, so this is the one that tore up. So, all right, that feels good and flush. So I go ahead and get the others like that. You can see how flush those are. They look like little planets. Mm -hmm. That one could look like Jupiter or Saturn with the lines. All right, so there you go. You've got your clock face. So this would be one way to do it. And of course, this is where we would bring our quartz center from the back and we would calibrate the length of these so that our hands will come out and just touch into that spot. So how far in? I'm not sure. I, you want them to touch our cover. I don't like when they come up short. Um, you know, be like about midway or a little beyond with the arm here. So, you know, but if it's short, I don't know. Whatever, that's getting kind of... <laughs> kind of personal preference, right? Yeah, I, it'll, it'll make you start looking at clocks when you start thinking about this. Like, what do they do? But, what size is the mallet there, Tom? Bruce is asking. Um, I am not sure. This is a wood is good mallet. I think they still make them, but I think now they've gone to green, greenish. Somebody knows, right? What do you mean size? Weight? Uh, what size mallet? Is that 12, 18, 20 ounce? Maybe it's a weight question, I guess. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> You're always shipping things. You want to see what this is? No, I wouldn't know. Well, we can measure it and get back to you, Bruce. I think it's a 20 ounce. Email me so I, I have your email. I would guess, because it has good weight to the head. All right. So that's one way. All right. So this way necessitates you drawing out, laying out, and then, I, and then making little um, impressions with the all, where all your points are. Now, that's fine if you're going to make one. But I know you're not going to make one. You want to make more. You want to make them fast. And you want to make them like, accurate, right? You want to get a lot more projects started that you never get finished. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Chris says it says the weight on the end of it. OK. Hang on 
a second. Ben Warnoff, maybe? I wouldn't spend time on it, honey. We can find out for him. I've got dents on the end of mine. I honestly don't know. Uh, it's, this is an oldie. I have literally had this for more than 25 years. So I don't know what it was. But I think they are, I would, I would guess, 20. All right, so that's one way. Now, let's think about another way. If we wanted to set this up to be more efficient, more accurate, let's imagine we drilled a larger hole than our hole. Like, let's say for these half inch, we, we drilled a 5 eighths inch hole. You might know where I'm going here, because we've been going here before. And I used a collar, a router collar, guide collar, as my guide for a plunge half inch bit. So what you do is you take some stock like this here, huh? And you lay it out, you find the center, and then I got my four quadrant quadrants that way, and then I walk off. And I get my thirds between. And if you've done well with your quadrants, they should all be equal, stepping them off. Okay. And then I made, I made some nice um, knife lines right out through my points that intersected with my circle, you know, my radius that's showing me how far out I want them to go. Now, I... I then took this panel and I said, okay, in this case, I don't want the larger one inch dots. Those, those are a little big <laughs> for this dial face, in my opinion. So I wanted a half inch dots at the, out, the quarter hour. So, um, and then at the, the in-betweeners, I wanted I wanted quarter inch dots. So I wanted half inch dots here, quarter inch dots here. But what I did was, after I laid it out, I went to the drill press. Instead of drilling the accurate hole for plug, I'm drilling now to accommodate the guide collar. Because this is going to become a template. You only have to measure one. You just lay out the template one time. And then you fasten it to whatever. And it's there. It's all set up. Use the guide collar with a 5 8 guide collar and a half inch cutter and you plunge, you set your depth plunge to whatever stock you're using and you get a perfectly accurate spot. Then come over here, boom, 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 you hit all four, then you go to your other router, maybe this is your fourth or fifth router, the others you can, you go to your second plunge router, you're going to need one. If you need a note, I'll be glad to write one. All right. It's if the person you need permission from is sitting right there, I allow it. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he really needs it. Or she really needs it. <laughs> I don't know. You need at least two plunger routers. All right? You really should have three. <laughs> All right. So then I don't after know how many you have. <clears throat> Not that many, actually. I do have three. But okay. the middle holes, rather than drilling the accurate quarter inch that I want to be my plug, I drilled 3 eighths inch because that's going to accommodate the 3 eighths guide collar and I will be plunging with a quarter inch bit to the thickness of whatever it is I'm trying to inlay. All right, so this is fine and dandy. So we did it kind of the primitive one-timer here. Here, we've got our quarter-inch stock, which I actually used my round, used my round as a guide. I tack this to it, and I flush route it. So I know it's exactly the right size. Now, I also know that for this, this pattern, some of you may have seen this before because we, 
We made these in a, in a class, but this is a 12-piece match, a sunburst 12-piece match, radial pattern. So I've got the radiant kind of grain going out from the center in that sunburst pattern. And I used all this um, ribbon figure from Cuban mahogany material. Uh, this is some really dynamite stock. And you know, someday I'm going to have a little sale on that too. I'll let you guys pick up some small pieces and have some fun at a very good price. <laughs> but this is awesome material. It makes this incredible color. So when it's finished, it looks something like this. Now, that's not a lot of finish on that. Is that glaring? I can move. Go ahead. Which way do I move no, to glare? Just hold. You should be still. Good. Okay. Right All right. So that's the color. But I actually, have, this was, I was using this as a... Uh, sample because I'm to do some different finishes. It's actually darker up here and then you notice it gets lighter down here. Can you see that in the camera? Oh, it's lighter down here? How oh, it's darker up here? Well, anyway, not too, distinct. not too distinct. I actually bleached this one time before because this is going to be, uh, I'm going to use something like this for a guitar face, an electric guitar with the radial pattern, but I don't want it to get that dark at the end. So I'm actually, I was using this to experiment with, with coloring. Anyway, this has the same 12 piece match. So every little pie piece is 30 degrees times 12 gives us our 360 degree piece. So I know that all of these are set that way too. They're pretty darn accurate. So I would, I mark this with some lines, and when I'm ready to do this one, I will actually carry my lines around, and I would just set it. You can actually see the line right there, and it's cutting right through the center here. And yeah, it's good over here. Let's see. So it'll be pretty darn close to splitting every line, and then I'm just going to plunge. I know all my my beads are right on, so that will work. Now, let's say, just for fun, we didn't want to use wood for our plugs. Like, instead of, this would be ideal to use something like maple, curly maple plugs. Um, you could use something a little more creamy or golden colored. Um, if you use something like cherry, it'll darken too much. Something, uh, yeah, I would say lighter with this. Something maybe like holly or, or like a, a golden type of color, like crotch birch or something like that. Birch would be nice. Anyway, we can use wood just like we used the wenge for this little sample board. But what if we used some other material like metal and made some plugs? When you use metal, it suddenly pushes it to this other kind of contemporary hip thing, you know? Especially if you use a metal that is the same as your hands. So then you have like, if you had like gold hands, you should use solid gold plugs. Now you could use, uh, but here I've got, these hands are very light, so you know that they're aluminum. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun to make my plugs instead out of aluminum? Aluminum is a fairly soft metal. Um, you could use brass. That would be fun to work with, too, because brass has a real good soft workability. Um, aluminum is a little harder, but still pretty soft. So what you can do is you can buy aluminum rod stock. Like this is already a half inch, and this is the quarter inch. And all I have to do is cut this into my plugs. It's hard to use a plug when it's this long. So you've got to have a way to cut it off. So I'll just show you a method that I used to cut this. And then we'll do a little sample plug. And then uh, into our, my sample finish board. I'm not quite ready to put them in there yet. And that's too many to do because I want to pull this off quickly to show you how it works. 
All right, so I've got to set some of these plugs. So what I'm going to do is set the depth to about an eighth of an inch. Now, why am I going to do that? Well, I had to get creative here. I wanted to make some very consistent discs thin enough that I could plunge. I don't have to use this heavy material, but uh, thick enough that I could control it. And there's probably some great ways. You metal worker guys, I know you're going to look at this and probably say, ah, oh, he could have used a blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah, that's right. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but I'm actually, I, I had this method that's a little primitive, but I'm going to saw it slightly thicker. And what I did was I had this heavy um, shelf support stock. I have these heavy shelves downstairs where you put this rail on the wall and then all your supports go in and your shelves sit on top. But it's almost an eighth inch thick. See the walls? It's quite thick. And it has, it, it's thick enough so between the little shelf supports on this one, I drilled quarter inch holes and then I glued in with some epoxy just a piece, it ended up being Wenge too, but it could be any hardwood. I glued it flat so it, it's backing those holes. So I just have to cut the little discs a little thicker than this material. And then what I'll do is use a, I'm going to use like a file. Use a, a, ras, a, a file or this, this is a, um, this is 180 grit, uh, wet dry paper, metal type paper. So I'll put my little discs in here and then they'll be a little oversized and I can just put them down on the file and by burnishing them here, they'll cut quite rapidly until I get down to the, I start hitting the shelf support. Then they'll come out and they'll be a, all the consistent thickness of that metal right there key is just to cut them a little heavier and get them done that way. I've got another one right here that I cut a hole a little larger than a half inch because I couldn't find my half inch <laughs> drill bit and I'll make discs, discs of the same thickness and I'll set up my half inch plunge rudder to accommodate that one the same thickness pretty much. All right so let me just show you one of those I'll just do uh Let's see. I'll do one of the half inch just because that makes it harder. Um, but to do this, you want to get a really good grip. So sometimes these, these hand screws come in very handy as a secondary vice. So what I often do is I'll clamp the hand screw in my vise. So I got just half of it in there. Now I can still control the thickness here. So it does a couple things. It brings it up, but I also can soften it. Now the reason I'm doing this is because if I just clamped it in here, I've got force here, and then I'm sticking out way over here, and it wants to chatter. I don't have a tight enough grip on it, and this way I can control it better. So let's bring this in, and I'll get it right about... Get a nice bite on it right there. Yeah, that was a real good bite. <laughs> I usually use these the other way. All right, so bring it up and then get a good bite. There we go. All right. Now I've got my, uh, my little square is set to an eighth of an inch. I'm just going to reference off the end here with a pencil and get general guideline here. You see my little pencil line? I want to leave that line because I'm pretty close with the mark there. I know some of you guys think I can't hack it but watch this. I'm going to just leave the line. I'm coming out. <laughs> Sorry I know you can't hack that humor. Um, here we go. I'm going to leave it and just go nice and steady.
Hold on a second. I gotta have this lower in the vice. Also. There we go. Wants to roll on me. That's the first one that didn't fall on the floor after I cut it, so I'm impressed. All right, so now I'm going to set it in, and I can feel I'm a little higher, just right. And to start out, I'm going to use the file. So I'll just put it on there, and here we go. I don't want to go too far. I want to hit the other side too. Almost. Let's see how thick we are. Oh, yeah, still thick enough. I gotta get a new file on this one. Actually, I have a I've heard about a place that you can send your files off very cheap. They come back sharp. If anybody knows that place. I think it's in California, um, but they just put them in like a bath, some type of acid bath or something in it. So it's very, they're very inexpensive to get sharpened. So they come back almost like they're new for just, just a couple bucks, you know? All right, and then I'd flip it and do the same. Just to, This half inch takes a little bit longer, but you see what we end up with is this nice disc that's hot. <laughs> and then I could refine it over on this one. This cuts pretty fast too. I cut this one just a touch thick, but I'm almost there. Let's just see. You can see how close it is. Well, looks like you were still rubbing against the rectangle. Okay, we're back. Wow. All right. Sorry, we missed you for, there for a second. Um, what I was doing was I just showed the final thicknessing, and I finish on the paper, and I end up with these sweet little discs that are all the same thickness. So. We want to get them pretty close to the level of the, of the veneer, because this is only veneer. So that one's sanded more. This is thicker. So if I get this pre-leveled, right, very lightly sanded, then I plunge out to the thickness. I want to get these to come in right about the level. The nice thing is with the orbital, I like to epoxy these in, and then orbital over before finishing and the orbital sands this just as easily as the wood and it'll bring it beautifully into plane and then when you finish it you just finish right over it and it pops in contrast to the surrounding area almost like wood but it has a different classiness to it because we'll have that and the metal hand so let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Let's do a little plunge routing exercise here. Let's see here. If I was going in business to the, do this, we would definitely need a more sophisticated way to make all those little wafers, right? Those little inlay dots um, they're almost like the size and thickness of those rare earth magnets that you buy very similar um, and I guess you could use magnets but <laughs> it'd be a problem if you had magnetic hands you would stop time all the time but um, anyway now I'm going to do a test so I'm gonna lay are you okay all right, I'm going to start coming in to okay. closer work here. So I've got my template, and 
I can choose any one of these quad quadrants. And I've got my lines here. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. If this doesn't work out perfectly on this, I'm OK. This is more of a sample. But my lines are coming in really nice right there. They look pretty close. So that looks good to me. Rather than clamping it, I'm just going to hit it with the pin nailer. And I wouldn't mind, I would do this even on the main top because the pin nails are so small that you can fill them and they are invisible. But here we go. The suggestion back a ways was maybe using a plexiglass template so you could see through. See through? Yeah, the only danger with that is it would, it's not as rugged when you would hit the file in the sandpaper. It would be softer. And so I know right when I hit that, I can almost feel it bottom out and then I stop. So, but yeah, that's a good option. But I'm not, I don't know how well it would work with the hardness. So anyway, let's get this on here. I'm just going to put a clamp over on this side. Whoops. Whoops. smooth. Somebody didn't put that clamp away very good. <laughs> That's somebody again. Someone needs to be fired, I think. That guy. <laughs> Just can't count on that guy. All right, so I'm going to come back in here. Put it right there. And we'll get another clamp over here. Okay, so now I've got my router set up, but let's start with the, the quarter inch. So this is my 3 8 inch collar that goes into the reference hole. Now I'm going to plunge till I just hit the surface. I'm now hitting the mahogany surface. So now I want to set my depth to that to the thickness of my inlay discs, which I know is this thickness here. So I'm just going to raise, raise this up and put it right between the stop and bring the stop down firmly. Now I'm going to tighten the stop. And now when I plunge, it's going to go that deep until it hits the stop because I'm indexing right now off the surface. Okay, so now I'm going to bring it up, and hopefully this all works. Here we go. I'm going to just, I've got it in position. I'm going to plunge and then do the other one. I'll just do two. Here we go. Now I've got my 5 8 inch, 5 8 collar with my half inch plunge bit in there, straight cutter. And that's all set to the depth already. So here we go. All right, let's take this off see what we got. Well, that's good. Pin nails came completely out of the other material. All right, so the quarter inch holes are nice enough. The plunge bit leaves a little bit of a bump in the middle. So I just take my quarter inch chisel. Can you see this? It's not, it's not creating a flat in the middle, so it leaves this little bump, and all I do is take that out. Super easy with the MDF. Just comes out easy. And these little guys, they also have a little bump there. I could get bits, I bet, that 
don't leave that, but these are regular straight cutter bits. Super easy to get them out of the way. And there we go. All right, so I'm not going to epoxy these in. I just want to put them in and see how close we are to level. Hopefully these all fit. <coughs> so here's one of my half inches. Oh, yeah. And another one. So if you slightly undercut, you could always put a shaving in the bottom of the hole, you know. Oh, shoot. This is the one that was too thick. I wasn't done with that. Let me see if I can. <laughs> Grab the wrong one. I don't know if I can pry it out. I might have to. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, maybe I set the depth with that one, too. It's a little deep. If it's a little deep, no worries. Like I said, just put a, pop it out and put a shaving in there. And that feels good. Then my smaller ones, let's put in a little quarter inches. Another one. So I'd epoxy these in. And these are going in, of course, on the unfinished material. They wouldn't have finish on like this. This is already finished. I'm just using this. But you can see how it creates this bright kind of elegant look. Now, there's probably a lot of other stock that I'm not aware of that you could use for this. I know when um, guitar makers use um, some other type of composite material to put those little indicator dots for the various frets on the neck, uh, where they just drill a hole and they have this long tube stock they put it in, they cut it off, and then sand it flush. And it's like a hard plastic. Um, works great. You could, have, you could even use other material like that, um, something that would be easier to cut and use. But if you want to use metal, it kind of makes an interesting uh, look. Because this one, this had black on it. And I took a little. Um, what did I use? I think I just used lacquer thinner uh, and stripped it off. Um, maybe it was acetone or something. And then when this gets on the, the center, this is the hour hand. But you can see how cool that looks if this were 12 o'clock here and this is coming around. It's quite an elegant, classy clock. So you can use some dark woods and some um, unusual material to create a very contemporary effect. So let's check this one out. But this is kind of fun to do in some stock that you don't really care about that much. And then this will sweep over here. Let's see. So it's going to cover the points like that. But um, if you have different size hands, you wear bigger gloves. No, you will, you can just readjust the hole. So I was thinking that I could use this for multi-purpose size um, f uh, clock faces. So once I get a center, I can scribe another circle. Like let's say I have shorter hands for a smaller clock face, or I just want to inlay a clock face on a square board and have the round face and use some contrasting materials. That would be pretty cool. Like a, a very, just a square board or an offset. So you have like a board sitting there and you put your clock face off to the side. And maybe like the camera lady likes to do, you put some thoughtful quote on the side that gets you thinking, right? Something about time. Yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> so let your mind go on this it's, I'm going to show you some examples next week we'll, um, we'll pick it up I'll show you what I, I know I have somewhere in my files like a uh, very contemporary clock that is not that hard to make but it's using these same principles 
um, like this, where you just inlay contrasting exotic material, interesting material. It's so little material that it costs you next to nothing. You know who has good material, and I'm not going to ask a plug. If you wanted some very cool, exotic, smaller pieces, Goose Bay, who has been a, a real good friend to us here, donating wood for free to these projects we've had, they have smaller billets of like ebony and bubinga and uh, rosewood of different kinds, all the legal stuff, um, olive wood. I mean, you can get these little blocks for not much, and those are really sweet because they're shippable and they're easy to, to get. But you could get something and, man, you could have fun at Christmas making some cool little clocks. Now, we'll put their link in the description below. It's Goose Bay Lumber <coughs> in Chichester, New Hampshire. Yeah. Now, the other thing are the works. We talked about the quartz movements. Um, there's a company called Clock Kit which I like, I mean, they have a lot of stuff, but I'm not finding like the really good, if somebody has a source for really nice quartz movement, maybe this is it. Maybe this is as good as it gets. You put a little battery in there, but I'm able to buy these hands with this quartz movement for like, I think it's less than 10 bucks. And then there's a smaller, there are smaller hands. I found this good source on Etsy. So that might be a good source if you search clock hands and movements, uh, you'll find some funky colors. Like, I'm going to probably pick up some before next week. Some smaller ones, smaller hands that you could put on other boards. Some that are red and white hands, you know, that have more contemporary shape. They're not this traditional shape. They might have a little more angularity to them. I, that would be fun to play around with. So, this would make a great a great item just for your house or a great gift for somebody just to uh, remind them how important the time is. And the time is now. So what, are there any questions no at questions. this time? No questions. No right. questions? Awesome. Well, that's maybe, maybe we lost it. Lots of good conversation about routers and how many people have and need and Yes, well, that's very important. The gift of routers in our lives. <laughs> All right. Well, if you enjoyed that tonight, would you go ahead and subscribe and share? Sharing is huge because if there's someone else you think would benefit from this, this free content, just share it. And uh, it's good for everybody. And also to like and to ring the bell. So we really appreciate that. And we appreciate you mm -hmm. and hanging out with us here in the shop. We, um, we look forward to next week when we come back and we cover more on this clock phase. And we're going to have more cool announcements coming up in the very near future. So if you're not already a subscriber uh, to our mailing list, that's different. That gets you everything that we got going on. And that's not, it's not a lot to bug you. It's just the important things that I, we think you'd like. So if you want to sign up, you can go to epicwoodworking.com. And we will see you there more frequently. All right. Thank you so much once again for the camera lady and myself for hanging out with us tonight and making a good time of it. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next time right back here on Shop Night Live. <laughs> Good night. Good night, everybody. everybody. Thanks so much. <laughs>